All right guys, so welcome to episode three of Breaking the Mold. Now, initially what you're about to see in today's episode was supposed to be in episode two. It was supposed to be a whole episode on social media and its effects on us as individuals. And then after filming with Johnny, I realized like, yo, this, this is just a whole episode in itself. And I'm so glad that that was that. When I sat down with Johnny, it was like, yo, I wanna talk from start to finish your journey. I know you've been through, you know, a lot of negative effects of social media which was kind of you know towards the topic of what episode two was going to be but i said hey i want to hear your whole story so we talked about his whole story and that's why it was a great episode in itself now my chat with jacob there was no kind of introductory point in the chat which kind of left me to say oh okay i'm just gonna not upload this but i was actually just re-watching the footage today and i was like yo this chat is just so good, I can't not upload it. So whether you know Jacob or not, I think you're really gonna enjoy this chat. One thing that I really particularly enjoyed, kind of stuck out to me, was the fact that you can genuinely see the struggle in myself having this chat with Jacob, trying to make up my mind whether social media is good for us, bad for us, whether it's fucking us up, or if the positives and the benefits outweigh the negatives, and you can just really see kind of like my internal struggle with it. For me, I love social media as a platform, but I have been at points in my life where it's kind of uh, led me to maybe not the best headspace. And then I've also been at other points in my life where it's you know kind of changed my life for the better. It's motivated me, it's inspired me to pick my game up. It's given me tools and lessons to apply or principles, but it's not the social media itself that's done that. It's the person that I've got an information off or the person whose energy I've felt, you know, was contagious enough for me to feel through the screen and things like that. So I think we use social media as such a blanket term talking about things where realistically, whether social media is good or bad for you, it's probably not social media itself, but the people you're following. So I think that's one really important thing to do is audit the content that you watch, the people you follow. Because like you'll see in this talk, we kind of chat about it. Social media can either ruin your life or it can really enhance and be the greatest thing that's ever happened to you as a creator or a consumer. And I think that's really important to understand because I feel like in this day and age, we're kind of like, we've merged with our technologies and our social medias and it's just become this kind of crazy thing which is just so all of a sudden our lives these days. And like I said, for some people that's great and for some people it's fucking them up. So without further ado, I'm gonna stop talking and I hope you enjoy the episode of Breaking the Mold. We'll be back into my usual videos next week. I've got some, some good videos planned and a special surprise for you guys as well. So stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, enjoy me and Jacob's chat. So so yeah, we're just here at Jacob's place. We had a little bit of a chat, episode one. Show us around the place, Jacob. Do you want a tour? Yeah, yeah. Okay, come with me. My head is spinning, man. I feel it spinning. My head is spinning, man. I feel it spinning. My head is spinning, man. I feel it spinning. My head is spinning, man. I feel it spinning. Oh, all my life I knew I had all the swag. I ain't want to brag. Like, we we'll got the reference. Somebody finish my sentence. I'm I'm just interested to know, like, um, opinions on, like, I know for you anyway, you've always been someone who's, like, grounded, you don't get affected by, like, other people and stuff. Yeah, I feel like, um, if you can spend a bit of time knowing who you are, instead of jumping into the social media game and trying to find yourself through that, you're going to have a much better time. Yeah. Like... There's a lot of people trying to get validation after validation and likes and comments all the time. And I went through that for a while when I first started on Instagram and YouTube. Yeah. And if I didn't get the likes, I thought it was my fault. But there's so much out there, especially now, where, I mean, it's difficult to get seen. Even if, like, you go to a jazz club down the road and there's the most amazing, talented musicians, but they're never going to get the platform because that's just how it works. Hmm. Some people just need to understand that they need to find themselves and know themselves before they start jumping into social media, I think. Yeah. That's definitely not the way it's happening though. No, it's not. And like, I understand you need to jump in like with a business, mm. but it's finding a balance with it. Like yeah. if you start getting consumed by everybody not listening to you or not watching your content, then you're going to have an awful time. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think it's trying to find a balance in between knowing who you are away from the screen 
and away from the cameras and everything mm. and having that persona and personality on the screen. Yeah. What's your thoughts on social media in terms of not being a creator as and more so being a consumer on it? I think you can definitely go down rabbit holes. Yeah. Um, I mean, I get caught often when like yeah. you're on YouTube and you see something that interests you. And so like I'll turn something on if I'm cooking something and afterwards you get sucked in even once you're finished eating. Yeah. You're yeah, still yeah, watching yeah. the video and you've got shit to do. But, yeah. Um, yeah, isn't that the truth? You yeah. need to... I mean, it's interesting. It depends on your... It depends whether you get addicted to things easily. Mm. Personally, I don't think I do. I find that I can kind of turn off from that and focus on what needs to be done. Yeah. And that's most likely through a lot of practice. It's not always been that way. Um, I mean, it's interesting, Tommy, because I'm just thinking... Because Jacob's like, obviously... It's just interesting in itself, just we could fucking talk about heaps of shit. But I guess we do want this topic to be social media for episode two, eh? Yeah, yeah. I think that's where it is, because yep. obviously Johnny's gone through it. Yep. Um, I'm on it all the time, I've got my opinions. Yep. Like, I, I guess the most defining thing will... I want to draw it as a conclusion, like, social media is just a tool. Mm -hmm. And we've probably had this chat before, but in terms of what you put on that in terms of your own beliefs or your own experiences, it's going to be a different effect on everyone. You yeah. know, some people, social media is going to ruin their lives. Other people, it's going to be the best tool that ever happened to them. Not even as a creator, but as a consumer. Uh, I know if you're watching the right stuff and the right content on social media, it can change your life for the better. Definitely. So I think it's really important to um, just note the positives from it. Because I think it's pretty easy to say and pick out the negative things of anything. But realistically, and this is something I'm trying to get my head around is, yeah, sometimes I get in bad loopholes or bad habits and I just get a bit annoyed. Like uh, subconsciously, you start thinking about other people's lives because you've seen it on your Instagram feed earlier that day. Or, um, But it, it just depends on your own headspace. And, and for me, there's points where my life has been crap. And I've gone to social media information or content, anything I've consumed, sometimes has actually changed my life and the direction of my life completely for the better. Mm -hmm. So it is one of those things, right? It's such a powerful tool. and Definitely, man. Like I try and treat it every day as a tool. Yeah. And it's sometimes a daily struggle because there's so much trying to pull you from what you're doing. Like constantly, mm. if you go on Facebook, if you go on your feed, there's a bunch of stuff yeah. on there that you haven't put there. Like yeah. it's not... They say it's tailored for you, but it's mostly just ads. And you go on YouTube, you see ads. There's always something that's trying to pull you from where you're meant to be. Mm. And if you can kind of always be on top of your mind and just say, no, like this is what I'm here on the screen for, on the keyboard for, yeah. I'm going to be okay. And then also setting aside time to just go and binge as well. So, I mean, there's always going to be things that are pulling you away from the stuff that you're meant to be doing. Mm. And it's just having a bit of willpower. Yeah. You know, if you can just like focus on your goal at hand, even if you need a timer, like sometimes I'll use a timer, an hour where I don't look at my phone and I don't look at any other browser. I just do exactly what I'm intended to do, what mm -hmm. I'm there for. Yeah. And yeah. you get so much done. Yeah. Like as soon as you make the decision, you just get yeah. an amazing amount done. You might hit like a five minute um, window where you're completely lost and you're thinking, oh, I just need to watch this video to get inspiration or whatever. But if you push through that and you don't do it, you'll end up doing amazing things. Mm. I find for me when I'm writing, whether it's a song, I'll kind of think that I need to do some more research on the topic or find a video that's going to inspire me more. Mm. But instead, I'm just like, no, I'm just going to write what I'm capable of writing. And eventually, you just come up with everything you needed. Like, it's all there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's that's interesting. Yeah, that's really interesting. I go through the same stuff where sometimes it just get like, I think of, uh, I'm watching all this, maybe it's like self-improvement or theorizing on ways to live or ways to structure or things to do. And then other times I like just have, I, I be like, you know what? I've spent too much time on this trying to get information from other people. Mm-hmm. What can I actually think of myself that's going to help me? Yeah. And all, every time I've got the answers, but I never gave myself enough credit to have that. Or you think because you find something once which changed your life that, oh, no, the, the answers are out there. I need to try find better content or whatever's going to help me. But it's like, it's just, it's common sense a lot of the time, isn't it? If you need to solve a problem or anything like that. Yeah, man. And there's, I think the problem is there's a lot of ex experts out there. 
So mm. we think, oh, we don't know enough. We have to go and find somebody else to help us, to let us get to the point we want to get to. But the reason people are following you or the reason people listen to my music is to hear our point of view. Mm. So we don't always need to go and research and see what other people are saying because our opinion might just be as valid. You don't know yet mm. until you put things out that are essentially all you. And then you'll see that you actually have enough wisdom. You have enough knowledge yeah. and you don't need to keep seeking that out all the time. I think it's just learning to think for yourself, eh? And I think this is the problem with what social media has done as well. Sure, it's given us a lot of new insights and stuff, but I think it's really we've been stripped of our ability to think for ourselves without even realizing it. Yeah, and it's a safe zone too because it's like, oh, if I don't know, I'll just speak to Siri or I'll go on Google and yeah. it's fine. And that's amazing. Like we have the most incredible tool and I... That's why I guess, yeah, it is a tool. Like we're trying to use it as a way to enhance what we're doing, not yeah. completely morph us into everyone else's opinion, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. So I guess that's why when, mm. yeah, when I'm trying to write and write music, I'm never following the trends or I'm never looking at what's popular. I'll listen to what's popular and I'll check out what's happening because I'm interested, mm. but I'm not going to take it on and say, oh, that's what's working. I need to change my sound for that. Yeah, it's yeah. like if I feel passionate about a particular thing, I'll just write about it. And if people like it, they like it. Yeah. It should be that simple, I feel. It's funny. Yeah, that's such an interesting concept as well. Like I go through it all the time where... For some reason, you just it's it's really easy to think, oh, no, nah, like I need to be doing what's going to be the most popular or get the most views. And it's not always the case, you know what I mean? There's so many sides to social media because mm. there's, there's the consumer and the creator on it. Obviously, we're creators, but we're also consumers. But the majority of people are consumers. Mm -hmm. And there's benefit and there's negative to everything in terms of even consuming good content and consuming, I guess, content that's not directly valuable, but it's valuable to have an, an escape and use it as an escape to just not think for once. Because I know for me, like a big problem I have sometimes is I get way too serious and I get way too uh, trying to find only good content and valuable content that helps me. Whereas sometimes I need the opposite and I need to just be able to switch off and watch some dumb fucking like mindless shit you know like there is yeah. value in there even though like it's easy to say that shit sucks yeah it doesn't give i you mean anything. like i think because we have access to this all the time you kind of feel like you need to be working all the time when mm. that's not the case because the creative mind what doesn't work that way yeah. it gets fatigued very easily so like giving yourself a bit of time just to literally do something mind numbing is actually productive mm. so i think with the consumer side of things it's more about separating yourself from it for a while. Like trying to designate some time in the day where it's not a part of you, where it's not in your hand or in your pocket. Yeah. Like if you can even just go an hour or two where you're just being a human being and you're not connected to some sort of uh, electronic device, mm -hmm. it actually makes a difference. I never thought it made a difference. Yeah. But I've been... Um, I'll wake up in the morning and I won't look at my phone for about 45 minutes. Yeah. And then I get onto it and I'm like, oh, this is actually a good time. Like I'm not completely absorbed in it all the time. Yeah. Like when I do jump on, I get a bit of like a gratitude hit because I'm like, oh, this is actually great. Yeah. Instead of never getting a chance to jump away from it, if that makes sense. I think the scariest thing about all this though is the fact that it's such new technology and we, it's just like so easily available everyone's got it it's it's just it's just, i don't know i feel like it's just randomly become a huge part of everyone's lives to the point that you're always just lifting up your phone for no reason and, and checking things and yeah i mean when your business is a part of it though like it's mm. way harder to switch off like before i could yeah. go touring and have enough of a budget to make a proper tour like internationally or in australia everything was online for me so i would never never get off yeah, I would be yeah. finding different things, emailing different people, trying to find new people to hit up and share my music with. And it was fine for a while because I think I was younger and I didn't know how much it could impact me. Yeah. But now I realize that there's a lot of things I probably was missing out on and a lot of songwriting I probably could have been doing instead of sending emails to a bunch of people that never replied. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So yeah, yeah. it's, um, <laughs> that's an interesting one. Yeah. yeah. It's just trying to find a balance with your business and everything and doing what works for you. Because sometimes 
some people might actually thrive off being on it all the time too. Like mm. this conversation is always about it's it's t- it's leaning toward trying to find a balance for everyone that works for everyone, but that's not how it is. Like some people might be happy on it all the time as well. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So it's kind of like I think finding where your happiness and your fulfillment is. Yeah. And trying your best to stick to that because the addiction of social media can make you veer from that. So yeah. I'm finding that if I'm on it in the morning after I've done a bunch of things um, like reading and exercising, I will be on it for about half an hour doing my social media posting. Yeah. So I'll go on Instagram, Twitter, yeah. YouTube, and then I mm-hmm. won't touch it for the whole day. I'll yeah. do my actual job, which is writing music yeah, 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 and writing yeah. things. Yeah. And then at the end of the day, I'll jump back on and reply to everyone that has responded to me. Yeah. So there's only two windows in the day I'm on it. And it's actually, for me, a lot better. Anyway. Is that a recent thing, though, that you've gotten to that point? Yeah. Yeah. It is. And, and I'm, it's interesting, though, because you're a really self-aware person. You're, I've always known you to be really self-aware. But, the, but like someone of your intellect, like still, it's something you've only recently done. It's like for most people out there who lack self-awareness, I feel like it's probably taken over their lives to a point. Even for me, like I've, I don't say this in the way of like oh, other people. I'm like, for me, I've been in points and I kind of got really angry at social media and, and everything at a point a few months ago because I was like, what the fuck? This is, I'm literally just checking my phone all the time out of habit. Sometimes I'm just randomly in Instagram. I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah, how did I this get isn't, here? Yeah, how did I get here? And I've had conversations, man, with, with some good friends from school. One of my friends was like, man, I had to put Facebook in a folder on my phone so that, you know, I, it was, it was a lot more of a process to get into there. Mm-hmm. And he said after two weeks, he was just still randomly on Facebook. Yeah. And I'm just, it's just crazy powerful. And it's just, it's scary. I think it is important to be able to set these boundaries up. as a consumer and say okay is this platform or is this type of content that i'm watching giving me value Mm -hmm. or is it just a bad fucking habit i think the habit is that people are afraid not afraid they're almost weary of being bored and i think it's okay to be bored like it's it's afraid i think it's afraid man people are afraid to be bored yeah as soon as something like as soon as whatever you're doing is off your mind it's like okay straight on straight on instagram scrolling through and then you catch yourself and you go i don't even know what i just looked at for the past 45 seconds you don't even recall what you looked at but it's just your mind going into something familiar yeah and i think it's actually interesting as soon as you like are self-aware enough to finish what you're doing and then just be like okay just sit there in silence for a bit if you're by yourself and then kind of just spend time with your thoughts for a bit yeah like, because no one's spending any time with their thoughts anymore. Yeah. It's all reactive. Like, you're looking at something and yeah. you're responding yeah. and you're responding and you're responding. But if there's no stimulus for you mm. and you just sit there in your thoughts and you let things just happen the way they're meant to, I guess it's a form of meditation. Not really because you're not actively meditating, but yeah. it's a bit closer to that kind of thing. And I think it's beneficial. Yeah. I think people, a lot of people as well, struggle to just be with their thoughts because maybe they're scared that their thoughts aren't going to lead to the best like conclusions sure. you know what i'm saying yeah because when you really stop and think you kind of like evaluate things like oh i said i was gonna die it's so on or i said i was gonna start this and i didn't do this and then that if that's what your thoughts are it's so much nicer to just avoid even thinking and just go to something like oh what can i like look at and what yeah. might make me feel better what can i read what's a nice quote that'll make me feel better about my day and yeah but i guess that's probably where courage comes in isn't it because it's like you need to face yourself sometimes Sometimes Mm. we're not perfect. A lot of the time, most of the time, pretty much all the time, we're not perfect. So like, if you can just understand that, all right, I didn't do those things I was meant to do. Why? And be more analytical instead of just pounding yourself down every time. Yeah. Because it's so easy when you have like a list of things you want to do that day. You only get half done. You're like, oh, I'm a piece of shit. I didn't do this. Mm. But it's like, you're not. You're still fine, <laughs> yeah. but you just didn't get those things done because something else might have come up. How can I evaluate that tomorrow and make it better? And then you just kind of do that day in and day out. It takes like, man, it takes a while because it sounds so easy, mm. but I've been trying to be as productive as possible in a balanced and authentic kind of way for a long time where I don't feel like I'm slamming myself. Yeah. And I yeah. feel like I'm kind of getting to that point now where 
I can be as productive as I want to be, but also I feel like I deserve a break. Uh, it's funny, I kind of came into doing this episode. I think I was coming off the back of hating it so much that I'm like, yeah, I want to do a, a video really just diving into the negative effects of social media. And then the more I've kind of tried to make that narrative, or I, I just so happen to be in a place now compared to a couple of weeks ago, I'm, I'm just realizing really what social media has done for me, mm. what it continues to do for me, even making this video, like being able to put out content is all on the back of this thing. And it is the center point for connection. That's probably the biggest thing is connection in this world with like-minded people, uh, for anyone to support you, to give you feedback, to give you information, advice. I don't know. It, it is a real, there's so much good that comes from it as well. Yeah. So, I mean, really, I think because everything and everyone is posting so much, it gets convoluted. But mm. at the end of the day, Facebook and Instagram are just a blank canvas for you to post things on. Mm. Instagram is just a place to put it's a photo. Look at it. Yeah. It's all it is. You go on and you can either look at someone's photo or you can post your own photo. Mm. It's super simple. Like it's, there's it's not much simple, going on right? with it. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah. you go, I fucking hate social media. It's like, why mm. do you hate social media? Yeah. What's your perspective on it? And, and how can I fix that? Because mm. social media can be a very enjoyable thing. Like you get to interact with people you've never met from other countries. Yeah. Like we've never been able to do that. Yeah. And you know, yeah, you go. So I wanted to ask you, what would be your favorite social media? Because I think it's funny, social media is such a blanket term. Yeah, I know for me, when I go on Instagram, I feel shit. I never feel good from it. Even if I'm scrolling and I see an informative, a good post, for some reason, I never just stop and leave Instagram and be like, yeah, this is... Is that because you're doing something that you shouldn't be there? Because you feel like you should be doing something no, else? Like, no, because I can sit down and watch a YouTube video on the exact same topic of what this Instagram post was. Like, for example, um, I think I see Mike Chang. Do you know him? The six-pack shortcuts guy? Yeah. Oh, man. Took over is YouTube all those years ago. No, yeah, no obviously he's just come back, but he's just, oh. he just massively detoxed from social media for like four or five years. Uh, he built a you know multi multi million dollar business yeah. with his stuff, but then it got to a point that he was just like fuck this, and he just took like four to five years off. But he's just started recently coming back on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, but he's doing videos. In his time off, he's got him really like into meditating, gone vegan, real spiritual, and and now he's doing videos on Instagram where they're they're like kind of helpful vids. But I'm like I go into it and he starts talking, and I just feel like it's it's like oh, I'm just like nah. But then I'll sit down and watch one of his YouTube vids. I watched a really good interview with him. And I was like, holy shit, this is like the best, most in insightful interview I've ever seen. Yeah. Yet, because I, maybe it's me personally, I don't respect Instagram as a platform to get good information off. Like, I love YouTube. I'll sit on YouTube and I'll watch a video. Yeah. And I'll leave YouTube and I'll feel like, fuck yeah, I'm motivated. I'm pumped. I'm going to apply this into my day. I've, I've never gotten a piece of Instagram content where that's done that. Same with Facebook. Never come off Facebook feeling good. Yeah. YouTube's probably the one that I like consuming. Do you have one that you... Yeah, I would probably say I'm the same. Yeah. Because I think the way the algorithms seem to work on YouTube, they're putting content that seems a bit more informative. I guess we're looking at informative things though, so that's why. Yeah. But the yeah. thing is, it's more like it cultivates what you want more of. Yeah. Instead where you go on Instagram and you go on the explore page or something and it's still kind of random. Yeah. You know, you're seeing a bunch of stuff you don't care about. Facebook even more. Like, I haven't seen one thing on Facebook I've cared about for so long. Yeah. I only yeah. go on there to post now. Yeah. Um, yeah. But YouTube, like, you go on and there's all these people that are doing podcasts and things that are informative and interesting. So, I guess it's a bit better that way. But, I mean, Instagram and Facebook seem to be just a little bit more random. Yeah. And they make you feel like you're kind of wasting your time a bit. Yeah. So, I mean, if you can get into a position where if you know, if you actively know you don't like that stuff, just post the thing and get out of there. Mm. If you have but to then, it, But then, some, see some, because here's the thing, I really don't like Instagram. Yeah, I find myself, I'm like, it's the best way to communicate with people for me and my following. It's the best way to reach them the fastest. Yeah. And I know that if I don't post on there, my following's just going to not go anywhere. You know what I mean? So I'm like, but oh. what is it about Instagram? Cause as we said, it's just a photo sharing platform. Mm. Like, do you, do you think it's the people on there? Because you can go and unfollow those people. Like maybe what I'm starting to think, cause I'm big on like beliefs and, and I know like, yo, anything is just anything. It's just whatever experiences you've had with it that will give you beliefs about that. 
it doesn't change what it is. Mm. But I think maybe for me, I've just been on at so many points in my life where I've been down and gone to Instagram and maybe that's been the thing that's depressed me because I've seen other people doing well yeah. at points specifically where I'm not doing well. Mm-hmm. Yet when I've not been doing well and I've gone on YouTube, I've found things that have really picked me up and been really great lessons and I've applied and, and made my life better. But I feel like Instagram's never given me that. It's given me the opposite. So maybe it's all my beliefs and that's in my I head. Think, Cause a I lot think of it w- probably is. But yeah. that's fine because we all have those beliefs. Like mine is similar in that way to Facebook. Yeah. But I think probably YouTube has more long form video and there's less for people to hide behind. I mean, you can just chop and edit if you want. Mm. There's a bunch of people that do that and that's cool too. But you're seeing more of the real human because it's a video as well. Mm. Like on Instagram, you're just seeing the photoshopped, touched up edit of somebody. Yeah. Yeah. And then you look at that and go, why is that guy so jacked and shredded? Why am I so skinny and shitty? Hmm. But it's like not the case. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes people just, there's a jealousy factor, that kind of thing. Um, I think it's just going back to the point of just understanding yourself as a human being yeah. without all these attachments and then adding them on as extras when you feel like they're beneficial to yeah. you and not getting yeah. completely just sucked into it, you know? Yeah.